Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lori Porter. As if you didn't know, but if this is your first time watching, welcome. We're glad to have you. My guest today is Sherry Perry. She is our board chair of NACA and has been a long time CNA uh, and has been a great leader. Uh, she's a hell of a boss, and I don't mean that in a good way. <laughs> Just kidding. She keeps me on my toes and everyone else here. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Thanks, Sherry, for being on. And Sherry and I are going to talk to you today a little about the cruise. That was the main focus of, ta of uh, Table for Two today. But some things are happening in Washington, D.C. that I want to make sure that I do an early briefing, as I said, I don't have a lot of facts, but I do know those of you that are certified nursing assistants took at least, if you have done it in the last 25 years, you took at least a 75 hour course in which to become certified. The nursing home industry are lobbying to reduce it to eight hours of class time training. Eight hours from 75. It's not only assault on our profession, it's an assault on the residents who live in those facilities. And more than just the industry, what makes it more serious and so important that I come out early on this is that the Congress is behind it. Both sides of the aisle have been convinced that anybody's better than nobody. And many of you are familiar with the TNA program, the temporary nurse aid that was started during COVID. COVID is gone. And they think that well, number one, let me just get back and stay on point. Congress is for it on both sides of the aisle. Here's what can happen. Our current Secretary of Health and Human Services, that is a cabinet appointment. Yes, he is in the Biden administration. And I don't care what side of the aisle you are on for president. I'm going to tell you right now they want to re they want to make it in so no health and human service secretary can ever undo it. The rules governing nursing homes have always been set by health and human services always. They believe CNAs need more training, not less. NACA has been here for 30 years trying to create a profession for CNAs, and I need each one of you, Sherry and I need each one of you. We all need each one of you to join the fight with NACA because this cannot stand. You think it's been bad? You just wait. You think the residents are suffering now? You think you're suffering now? You just wait. It is time to fight. It is time to win one frickin' battle. And that is to protect people and to protect our profession. You have all worked very hard to get what you have got. Many of you have gone beyond CNA and are passing meds and are doing restorative and different programs. This is insane to reduce the classroom hours. What on earth does it mean? It has to mean something. It means the residents aren't worth anything. It means nursing assistants aren't worth anything to people who haven't heard from us, heard from you. I can go to DC every week and stand on the Capitol naked and I can't get as much attention as you well, I might get arrested just for indecent exposure. Nobody's going to stop and take a picture. But one person cannot fight this fight. One staff at NACA cannot fight this fight alone. We have to grow this association as fast as we can to 100,000 certified nursing assistants 
so that Secretary Becerra of Health and Human Services can continue to focus on building a care force, not a workforce. CNAs are not workers, they're carers. So I want to be out front on this. There'll be a lot more information coming out in days and weeks ahead, but we must stop this momentum of people believing there is no one who wants to become a CNA. We proved in over two, oh, in two, three states that NACA can recruit thousands of people who want to become CNAs and they're serious about it. Where else on earth can you go and start a profession at around 26 to 32,000 a year and in eight years, if you want to, be a $150,000 a year earner? The sky is the limit for us until they pull the, pull the rug out from us. And these things happen all the time to CNAs because we're not at the table. If we're not at the table, we're on the damn table. And that's where we find ourselves right now. Sherry, thank you for letting me have that few minutes to blow out about that before I explode. And I hope that it's resonating with other people. I want to switch now to, why don't you pull up our first slide? Because we're here to talk about something fun today. And this is our cruise ship. Sorry, I don't have a very a better picture, but um, this is the Mariner of the Sea, and it will be what is carrying 400 of us to Cozumel and back to Galveston. I can't wait to be with you all, and today I wore my care shirt. Do you care? I think I'm getting it on camera. Do you care is a shout out to care because they are our official sponsor and partner for CNA Fest. They're a great partner of NACA's, and I thank them very much. For those of you that don't know, I think there's still a couple of spots left if anybody's watching that's not registered to go. I think there's still a few spots for the $200 discount that CARE is offering on the cruise. So if you know people who want to go but are hesitant to go or afraid to go, Sherry and I will hopefully be able to help you with that because she's been several and I've never been and I'm scared to death. <laughs> Sherry, tell me why I shouldn't be afraid. Oh, there's nothing to be afraid of. These ships are wonderful. They're just like floating hotels. You're as safe in a hotel on land as you are out there in the sea. Do we have to worry about any pirates coming no, out? No, I don't think so. No pirates. <laughs> I'm thinking of everything imaginable. You know, pirates, we hear about pirates from Samoa, you take it. No, we don't want, no, no pirates. Um, and so you really don't, do you feel the motion at night? Do you feel you're like on water or what? When, when you first get on, you'll have to get what you call your sea legs. Um, and, and that'll come pretty quickly. Do they pass those out or do you buy our <laughs> own? Right. You, you gotta learn how to use yours. <laughs> Uh, at night when you're sleeping is when they crank up the speed um, to get from where you're going to the next point. It, you don't feel it at all. So in the daytime, they they just cruise along at a normal speed. But at night is when they really uh, bump up the speed to get you from one place to the other. So we're cruising faster at night. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, you may notice it if you're a night owl, but you yeah. won't necessarily mm -hmm. feel it during the day so like we don't have to wear seat belts or anything no. or in in our sessions in case the no. boat dips or anything see i'm the chicken so it's good that i'm afraid because i met with a group of people yesterday <laughs> that are kind of afraid too so uh you know we we do want to be mindful that there are some a lot most of the registrants thus far i think are first-time cruisers like me do we Lori, I seen in the I seen in the chat. Uh, I had a question that said, "Is it like being rocked to sleep?" And I'm going to show my age here. Do any of you have, or any of you ever had a, a water bed? I used to have one, and I would shake my leg at night to make it flow, so I could uh, I could go to sleep. And so that's kind of like what it is. It's just like a just a real soft 
rock in motion. Um, and yes, it will rock you to sleep. Now I will say it depends on what, what level you're on as how much you feel. And it also depends on if you're on the, in the front of the boat or the back of the boat or the middle. So, um, well, what tell or, us about each location. Well, the lower levels are closer to the water. So therefore you'll feel the, you know, you'll feel the rock and motion of the, the ocean a little bit more. Um, the front of the boat, of course, is getting the waves head on. So if you're up toward the front, you'll feel it a little bit more there. And the back of the boat, you'll feel it a little bit more there. Um, so the middle and the middle section and about middle ways up is where is, is if you don't like to rock is where you feel the less. And if you have a tendency like me, I never fly without a motion sickness pill. So I have a great fear of being motion sick for four days. Um, do you believe, I mean, I would highly encourage, I use something other than Dramamine because <laughs> 30 years or 28 years ago, Lisa Sweet said she'd never travel with me again if I ever took a Dramamine because it turns me <laughs> into somebody else that she don't like, apparently mm -hmm. pretty grouchy. Uh, and it, you know, I know they have the non-drowsy formula, but I use one, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but I'm going to call it Bonine. B-O-N-I-N-E. -E. You can get it at Walmart or any pharmacy probably, but it's one pill. You chew it. It lasts 24 hours. And I've been in turbulence on airplanes and never gotten sick. If you have a tendency for car sickness, motion sickness, plane sickness, I would encourage you to bring a bottle of Bonine. One a day. Chewable or swallow, either way. You can also go to your doctor and get a prescription patch to go behind your ear. And one of those a day, too, if you want a, a little bit more of a double up. So I should do both, Sherry? It depends. I mean, just for my own set, my own uh, stress level, I suppose. Probably. Yeah. Because if you're a motion sick person, you know, you don't, people talk about, you know, I remember one time my stepdad, I was riding out to look at a house or something with my brother and my stepdad and my brother were in the front. I was in the back. I was about 25. And I said, if we don't get there soon, I'm going to be sick. I'm getting so car sick. And he said, my stepdad said, that's all in your head. And I was sitting behind him and I said, no, it's going to be all in your head here in just a few seconds. Because <laughs> once you get it, you cannot get rid of it. I have been on the sea before. I worked a fishing boat in, in Dustin, Florida, my freshman year of high school. I was the bait girl. So I put through the squid out in the bait holes for the fishermen. But we had, uh, I, I took my, uh, at the time, I think I was still on Dramamine. But one lady didn't take anything, and she didn't know she'd get sick. And once you get it, you can't take anything to stop it. So better to be prepared than to be unprepared. Sorry to spend so much time on motion sickness, but for those of us that have it, we are pretty nervous about it. So, Sherry, uh, Dane, let's uh, move to that next slide for a little bit, if you would. Because I, I wanted to be sure and show you, because this will give you a little bit of comfort, I think, in just seeing, um, this is the theater on the left. And that's where CNA Fest will be from, at, um, we're going to try to get it at eight, but it may not be able to, we may not be able to get in till nine, but it will be uh, CNA Fest for uh, the mornings of both days. And in the afternoons, we'll move to the conference area because they have to have the theater in which to get shows ready and, and the entertainment for the night. Um, Sherry, you've probably been in one of these theaters, haven't you? Yes. Um, do you know anything about, like, is there entertainment every night or just certain times? There's entertainment every night. And are we free to go to that entertainment or does that cost yes. extra? No, it's free. So aside from our CNA Fest mornings, which are Friday and 
ooh, Sunday. Saturday, we do Cozumel. Friday morning, we'll start in the theater. Friday afternoon, we'll end up in the conference room on the right. And then Saturday, we'll not have sessions because that's the Cozumel day for those of you. For those of you that have not got passports, I am going to once again, uh, on behalf of our travel agent, say to you, um, do not, you got to stay safe, not because somebody's going to hurt you. I just don't want you to lose any form of your ID or anything because you will not make it back to the United States. Protect those birth certificates, raised seal only. Do not come with a hospital birth certificate or they will not let you on the ship. I saw where uh, Raymond and, and his husband are apply, uh, have gotten passport cards or soon will have passport cards. Um, so you still have time to do it the less expensive way. And Sherry, have you gotten a passport? Mm -mm, no. Are you even going to? Uh, I usually don't. I usually just do the birth certificate and the okay. driver's license. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you've never had an issue with that. Never had an issue. Once you, uh, when you first get on and sign in and check in, they, you show those credentials and your sell and sign card that you'll have to keep with you at all times on the boat. Um, that gets you off and on the boat. Um, they do check your sell and they scan your, um, sell and sign cards, uh, uh, getting off the boat and getting on the boat. And you you won't have to show your documents anymore. To, yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about once we get there, how long does it actually take for 3,000 people to get on a ship? So it says they, we leave at four. Was that when we have to be there to get on it? Or that's when? No, no. They uh, actually, when you sign up and you sign up to go on your when you check in is what it's called they'll ask you to pick a time you pick a time they only let so many in each slot um board the ship so it's a continuous thing but everybody's not piling in at one time gotcha and you can't get on before your time that you chose so we leave at 4 p.m. and people will be flying into Houston or driving in whichever mode of transportation busing in if you use a bus, you can get all the way to Galveston. If you're on a plane or you driving, you can get all the way to Galveston. But if you're flying, there is no airport in Galveston. So we will fly into Houston and then we will shuttle from Houston to Galveston, which I understand is about 40 minutes. And so, Sherry, what time should everybody plan on being there if the boat says four? 12 noon does that mean we're leaving at four or is that what yes they set sail at four o'clock on the dot mm -hmm. okay so when you make your travel plans keep in mind you want to be in galveston by noon well if you come in to houston at 12 okay then then you can you've got 45 minutes to get there just make sure that when you uh, check in, you pick a time a little bit later than that. Okay, super. Now, I do happen to know that we'll all be dining together and food in the main dining room is all included in, in your cruise package. Um, and our seating, uh, it, Sherry, do you, didn't she give us 5.30? 5.30, yeah. 5.30 p.m. And you pretty much have to be, they've sectioned off a place for all of NACA and uh, and so we all like to sit together it'll mean something on the cruise too when other people see you know there's 2600 other people on that ship or maybe 3000 they're going to take notice of who we are and so we everything we do is an opportunity to educate other people 5:30 is our dining time are they specific on breakfast on the other meals or is it just supper dinner sherry uh, it's just the dinner um they they also have a buffet if, you know you don't have to go to the main dining every night if you don't per se want to but that's where your three course meal comes in at now i will you know there's still details to come for those of you that may be getting a little nervous like what's the agenda what's the schedule 
just like we talked about, when do I need to be in Galveston to be able to get on this ship? All details, there's still more to come because once we, in probably, I think it's July, NACA turns all of the registrants into Royal Caribbean, and then you get a Royal Caribbean account where you can go in and add things if you want to. Sherry, you talked a little bit about excursions and your tips that went out mm -hmm. to everybody recently by email. And if you didn't get that, check your uh, spam folder because NACA, Sherry developed a two-page uh, cruise tips and some of this information we're talking about is on that as well. Um, excursions. Talk a little bit about some, you know, I know we don't know specific to our cruise, but there are different things to do that they would want, might need money for. Right. So if you want to go on an excursion, even to the beach, it, you know, if you go with the Royal Caribbean, they make sure you get there and they make sure you get back in time before the ship leaves because the ship waits for nobody. When they say that they're leaving port, they're leaving port. And if you find it cheaper out, once you get out into Cozumel, it may be cheaper, but they don't guarantee you that you'll, they'll get you back to the boat in time. And then you're stuck. Wow. Um, and excursions are, you know, they're different prices. Sometimes the beach excursion is like $29.99 a person. Or when I went to, I've been to Cozumel before and I also went to Costa Maya. And one of the things I did was uh, a small underwater submarine. And I did that and they went down, they take you down under the water. So you don't like, like scuba diving, but you're in a submarine where you can see all the stuff that's going on down underneath the water. And it was like 199 a person. So they offer all this on the ship. You can pay for it there on the ship or you can pay to pay for it prior to uh, if you know exactly what you're wanting to do. And um, my advice is anything that you want to do, do it while you're there because it's a once in a lifetime opportunity for some people. And um, it's just nothing. I didn't, I didn't let nothing pass me by. Did as much as you could. huh? Mm -hmm. um, now, hey, uh, Lori, I, I'd like to make a quick note real quick sure. um, from Galveston airport, no, from uh, George uh, Bush airport uh, to the Galveston cruise port. It's about 70 miles. So it could, it can take up to an hour and 20 minutes. A transportation Ooh. time now however there are shuttle services for people for as little as $40 uh each person uh, I think each way um there are a couple resources um that I that I found um but evidently Royal Caribbean also provides a shuttle from the airport so just to uh, kind of keep that in mind make sure you guys are flying you in need to look at hobby though because hobby is Southwest flies more into Houston Hobby Airport. So if we want to point it out from both locations and see if Royal Caribbean um, provides shuttle from both airports. Okay. Thank you, though, for, for mentioning. Welcome. Sure, absolutely. Um, are there any specific questions, Dane, that's come in um, that would need to be addressed? Any fears or concerns or questions uh, that we haven't? Uh, what I saw is care having a party while we're on shore and causing them. That's my understanding. More details will come out about that. Um, they they certainly have talked about it. Um, Vicki Castilla is putting some good stuff in there on excursions. Um, and let me speak to this again. Very soon, July, August at the latest. And you're thinking, August? We leave in November. I'm sorry. Uh, there's a process to all of this and because Royal Caribbean needed us to do the collections of the cruise because of the CNA Fest, <clears throat> ordinarily you just go right to Royal Caribbean, but they did not give us a code in which our members could do that. So we're having to do the collection. Registration ends early in August and then we turn all the names of those that are registered into Royal Caribbean and our uh, travel agent, Liz Arnold, will ensure that all that information is where it needs to be. And then you will be notified either by NACA via email uh, or, uh, well, NACA being email 
that you are able to go in. And if we have the information for you to set up your account, you'll each want to set up a Royal Caribbean uh, profile because that's where they show the excursions. Is that correct, Sherry? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and, uh, and Lori, Andy had mentioned that Liz is putting together a full travel guide virtual booklet for all the attendees that will have lots of insights. She's wrapping that up and making a video walkthrough for everyone as well, too. So, okay. um, yep. Sherry and I and um, Sheena and Karen on the board um, are going, and, a couple, and some people from the CARE, uh are going on this very same cruise in a couple of weeks so you know if I, you don't see me in november it's because i'm still in mexico would not get back on the ship so if i get back uh june 11 10th <laughs> this very cruise we're going to site inspect the whole thing so we have a full understanding so we can help each and every one of you even more so unless so the pirates get to you but what? Uh, unless the pirates get to you. Yes, I might get the pirates. <laughs> you mean we got to worry about pirates? <laughs> Wanda Sykes does a bit on pirates. That's why I'm so hung up on pirates. <laughs> anyway, um, Sherry, any other? I didn't get to all the tips, but uh, yeah, reconnaissance. That's it, Andy. We're doing a reconnaissance mission. Uh, any. Uh, additional things that I mean I know we didn't get so I have the list of your tips but uh, we're out of time in two minutes so I, I just wanted to make sure they understood that you know that the Royal Caribbean is a cashless system um, so you know your sale and sign card is what you will pay for everything on the boat with anything that you want extra if you go shopping in their shops or anything they will scan your sale and sign card so you have two options you can connect it to your debit or credit card or you can actually bring cash and give it to them to put onto your card um, but if you're bringing cash make sure you have enough of it because once it's out it's out wow uh, Gotcha. But once you're on land, when you get out and cause the mail, then the sale and sign card isn't any good. You'll have to use your debit, credit card, or cash there, too. Very important to know. Cashless system. Now, for those of you, in times of my life, I wasn't able to have a card. I didn't have a card. There's ways now to get cards. So don't be afraid to get you, even if you have to do a prepaid, I'm sure. It would work. It's simply cashless. So as long as you can put money on the card Sherry's talking about with Royal Caribbean, um, is there, can you pay, do, does Cosmel vendors take cash, Sherry? They take cash and debit or credit card, yeah. Okay. And uh, I will tell you, when you go to Cozumel, I haven't been in a number of years, but the last time that I've been twice, uh, not by cruise, of, of course, but um, I can tell you that there will there is some street beggars uh, and some kids and things like that. So you're going to see a, a, a different culture when you go into town in Cozumel. Uh, and so uh, you might even want to look it up and do a little research on Cozumel. Nothing to be afraid of. It is lovely. And I'm going to tell you um, the, the um, very kind, just kind people. But uh, they're, they're pretty broke compared to our poorest person. They're, they're pretty broke there. So um, just wanted to let you know about that. And uh, from Nigeria, hang on a second, Sherry. Did you see we have a member on from Nigeria? I did see that, yes. It looks there's like there's two. Association of Healthcare Assistants, by golly, we got Nigeria on. It looks like, it, it looks like there are two, Lori. Two? two? From, yeah, two members oh from Nigeria. My goodness, if CNAs from Nigeria can join table for two, anybody can. Thank you guys so much. And I know you want to take the cruise. I know there's some challenges. Somehow Liz brought those to my attention. And I will do everything in my power to work through those issues. I'll be talking with Liz again next week. So I 
I will not, Dane, do not let me forget about our members in Nicaragua who would love to go on the cruise, but their identification, passport situation and all that may be a little bit different since the rest of us seem to be from the United States. And I would love to have any of our uh, members in Nigeria or anywhere around the world who are um, with, in the future, we're going to do a podcast. And so I want to get our guests that are our members from around every ethnicity, every gender, every, you name it. We are it as an association. CNAs are, we have immigrants. We have varying, uh, diverse, as I said, ethnic, race, religion, uh, sexual orientation, you name it. We, we could represent it in the CNA world. And I want other people to understand who CNAs are, not what you are, who you are and how you are and the passion you have for what you do. And let's keep pushing. And please stay to you with your ear on the ground to this nurse aid training hour reduction. Because if you had if you didn't find the TNA program to your satisfaction, now's the time. And we are going to be setting up some events that will voice our our uh, uh, our concerns and our issues with this. But at the same time, as I said, seven or 10 of us can chime in uh, every time. But until there's 100,000 of us that are on the same page, that understand being a professional CNA is valuable. And the people we take care of are valuable in every setting. I look forward to you joining the fight with us members and tell every CNA you know, every caregiver you know, you are a NACA ambassador. Go out and talk. Don't let a CNA who might be able to take this cruise just because they're not a member and don't know about it. Spread the word. Spread the word. We got to build the army. Sherry, any last word? We're four minutes over. Yeah, I just want to say, um, remember CNA week's coming up. We've got lots of stuff on the toolkit for everybody. The theme's been released. I know Taylor's working on the video. Uh, the pro shop's up and running. So, you know, spread the word about CNA week. If you, if your facility doesn't celebrate you, don't let that hold you back. Celebrate yourself and celebrate each other. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better. Thank you, Sherry, for being on today. And thank you all for giving us your time. I look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you and goodbye for now.